Good afternoon. Welcome to the Painted Soldier podcast. Uh, normally I give a date and stuff. I'm recording this on uh, Wednesday, January 2nd, 2019. I'm actually going to go to YouTube with it first and then share it as a podcast later. So the YouTube channel is Painted so- The Painted Soldier and the podcast channel, if you go to paint, uh, www.paintedsoldierministry.com and go up into our menu bar, click down, and you'll see uh, Painted Soldier Podcast. You can listen to other podcasts here, too, uh, when you go there. So uh, it's a little different doing both of these at the same time, trying to keep my head in straight. But uh, So there's something been on my heart, and the reason I'm doing this today, uh, I just got to get it out. And God, I think, has given me this guidance and stuff, the wisdom here. Um, not wisdom, I don't know what it is, but it's uh, definitely some guidance here. So since we've been in Philadelphia, Shane and I, uh, we've been just seeking, like, what is our part here in the Church of Philadelphia? Um, You know, just checking things out, seeing what's going on, weighing out religion, Jesus, prayer, seeing what's going on, asking God, where do you want us to be? And um, so the other day, um, actually on for Christmas Day on December 25th, we busted a left out of here and took the main line, the road we live on, into the city. And it's crazy because you go through some really rich areas, Porsche dealership and uh, Maserati and um, Ferrari dealership and all this stuff. You go past Villanova University and that. And then you get into an area, um, as soon as you, it's not, a, it's very evident, um, trolley tracks and stuff metal bars on buildings, metal gates, uh, graffiti, a lot of rundown. So there's a, there's a very high area of poverty um, that is um, that is there. And um, it's crazy. And there's churches the whole way. I mean, you know how churches are. There's churches everywhere. So there's churches in the rich area. Then you get into this poverty-stricken area. And then there's churches there, too. And a lot of them are run down and just in regular buildings and stuff. And um, one stuck out to us, which was kind of crazy. We saw the name. The name was interesting. And um, sure enough, like a couple days later, there's a news story on it. And um, man, they're feeding all these people and they have a big hole in the roof and water's rushing in because it's like raining all the time here. And um, man, I just got to thinking, and it says like they're trying to raise money to um, to fix this roof so that they can continue to do what they're doing. The gospel's being spread like to hear what these people were saying, like, it was legit, like, and, and, and the discernment in my heart, the Holy Spirit in me definitely led that it was legit, you know, like, man, they're doing good things, they're, they're leading people to Christ, they're trying to help people out, and I, it got me thinking, like, because I follow a lot of churches everywhere I speak, in the towns I speak, and uh, places we lived, I follow a lot of churches, and, and other places that we've just attended, I mean, we've ducked in on a lot of churches, like, I don't even know how many churches I follow, um, but I see like churches spending one hundred fifty thousand, two hundred thousand dollars on buildings with like uh, jungle gyms and basketball courts, uh, with the future expectation that God's going to fill these places up, and um, and yet these people would need like ten thousand dollars to fix their roof, um, which got me thinking like, man, what does God think about this stuff? Like seriously, what does the Father think, or what does Jesus think about when we're in a region? Because in the Bible, man, it's a regional church. Like, like Paul didn't come out of the front door of the Methodist church, walk a half a block, go in the front door of the Presbyterian church, preach a little bit, walk out, go across the street to the Catholic church, and then to the other Methodist church, and then to the Christian Missionary Alliance church, and then to the one, one Baptist, first Baptist, over to second Baptist, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, I think... Um, I think it's, uh, yeah, I think I think there'd be some crazy stuff. Uh, I, th- I don't know what goes through God's head, but like scripture is really clear about there's a lot of unity, and unity is what sets us apart. And I'm just thinking, man, Lord, like, like I don't get it. Like, I, I don't understand why these, like there's, uh, and we're in the United States. Now listen, like, I get the Africa, and I'm not saying that they deserve to have it, but I mean like, like right down the street, you know that there are people getting wet while they're preaching, and then but you're preaching like, and I don't have the money, man. If I had ten thousand dollars laying around, I guarantee you I would do it. I'd just go give it to them, say, man, get this roof fixed. Um, 
So I, I don't know. Like, I don't have answers, but this is what my thoughts are. I want you guys to think about this kind of stuff. Like, um, we need to seek the Lord. And a lot of people are like, well, he's sovereign. He knows. He provides where he favors and stuff like that. Well, man, maybe he does. But I have a hard time believing, like, he don't like everybody in Africa. He's just letting them die and starve. Like, I think there's a lot of rich people who are hoarding money who could be feeding these people. Like, I think we're called to take care of, like, what we do for the least of these type people. Um, so I'm not buying that anymore. Like, he really likes you because you have $6 million in the bank at your church and you have shiny gold posts. And I don't know about that, dude. I, I, I really hope that's true. But I'd hate to be the guy that comes before the Lord with my millions of dollars saved up and my shiny gold post like look i preached with a shiny gold post and he's like dude do you remember that guy down the street whose church's roof was falling in like i gave you that money to help that guy you know what i mean like i don't know like i'm just thinking the heart of the father who loves us all the, the same like his beloved um he loves whether you're poor rich whatever he really has a heart for the poor um so yeah like i'm just saying like this is really I don't get it, and I needed to get it off my chest, and, I, and maybe God's put it on me because I, I will say what, what I'm saying. So, um, so scripture came to me, and um, imagine that, like there's actually scripture to, to talk about what we're talking about, because um, we are one body, right? We're under the head. If Christ is the head, I have a hard time believing. He's like, hey, let the foot rot and fall off over here because they need a roof and, and hand. You got gloves on. You got three sets of gloves on. Um, don't put it down there when, you know, so someone's disconnected from the head here, someone, or, or we're not hearing from the head, like there's like nerve damage or something in one of these limbs. Um, but anyhow, so I, we'll go back to Acts 2 and, um, man, Peter comes out and he's telling people repent. 3000 are added on to the church and it says they were continually, this is Acts 2 verse 42 through 47. It says they were continually devoting themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to breaking of the bread, breaking of bread into prayer. Everyone kept feeling a sense of awe, and many wonders and signs were taking place through the apostles. And all those who had believed were together and had all things in common. And they began selling their property and possessions and were sharing them with all, as everyone might have need. Day by day, continuing with one mind in the temple and breaking bread, and from house to house, they were taking their meals together with gladness and sincerity of heart, praising God and having favor with all people, not some people, all people. And the Lord was adding to their number, day by day, those who were being saved. I just wonder what God thinks when, um, when we are talking about, you know, people and we're like, oh, well, they're not in our district. Well, yeah, they're not in our region. Um, how about this? Um, oh, no, that's a Baptist church. We're this church. We're EPCA DVD, and they're, they're the DVD BCDs. Yeah, so I don't know. And I'm making those things up. I'm trying not to use any names because, really, I don't have any preference of, like, I don't have, I love them all, um, but I also see an issue with, with dividing ourselves, especially when scripture never says that. Um, I don't care what you try to twist around or ration out. I've heard all kinds of crazy stuff from flavors of ice cream to, oh, here's a scripture when they disagreed. That's where, no, they didn't start a whole new church and ignore their neighbor down the street. Um, they just went their way and came back together eventually and all was well. But, you know, so I don't have the answer. Um, but I do, I do have a burden in my heart to put this message out. Like, we need to be unified. God talk, talks about unity. I don't know what the answer is. Um, but I guarantee you, when we do come together, whether it's going to be through persecution, tribulation, or just God just does it, bust down the walls, um, or maybe we need to start helping the least of these. And maybe not storing up treasure on earth. And start t storing up treasure in heaven. Or maybe the moth and the thief will start coming and destroying and stealing and stuff. So, um, I don't know. But the burden in my heart is this. Um, it's We need 2019. You want a prophecy? You want a goal for 2019? Um, start fellowshipping with other churches in your region. Start crossing barriers. Start putting things aside uh, that don't matter. 
to seek Christ. And if you seek Christ and they're seeking Christ, um, things will change. And um, I don't know what my part is, but I'm going to continue to pray. And as soon as God gives it to me, um, I'm going to continue to do what I got to do. So, Lord, help that church that needs the $10,000 to fix that roof. And Lord, help us become one. Lord, help us unify, because that's what you want, so that we can be of one accord, that we can hear from the head. Christ, you are the head of the church. Um, so if there are parts of the body that aren't connected to the head, it's not part of you. So Lord, weed it out. And um, man, let's do this right, Lord. Give us strength and uh, put us, bring us to repentance and correction, Lord. Just help us. We need help. Lord, you're the only one that can do this. And just thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. So, yeah, guys, I don't know. Just a message I needed to get out there. Quick video. Love your neighbor. Love your enemy. Mm, love God. I don't see anybody excluded. And I don't know how you can love somebody if you have extra and you know that they're getting their heads wet. Or if you have a fridge full of food and you know there's somebody hungry. I don't know how that's showing love. Uh, I'm not perfect. But man, I, I don't know. So, with that being said, seek the Lord. Seek the kingdom. Start doing what he's told us to do. Oh, me too, me included. I can see myself, believe me, in this. And, um, man, let's just let him move and let's make this world a different place. Let's show them um, that there is a God and he loves, he loves us. So, hey, be blessed, be graceful, be loving, and show mercy to everyone. And, um, man, I'll talk to you later. Um, Painted Soldier Podcast, The Painted Soldier on YouTube, www.paintedsoldierministry.com. Peace.